Hi, I'm Keith, and here we have a John Deere 35G. While this machine was not running, it got completely submerged in water, so we have to drain all the fluids, get the water out of the engine, get this thing fired up and running again. Welcome to Service Call, a mechanic's guide to service, troubleshooting, and repair. And on this episode... See that's all water coming out still? What we're trying to do is get everything we can possibly get out, out. <laughs> Looks bubbly. That's water mixed in the fuel. And I can see the bottom. It's straight water. To make working on this machine easier, we will be bringing it into the workshop. Now let's see if Keith can bring this machine back to life. So what we're going to do here is we have a 60G here, John Deere. We're going to hook up a chain to it to the front of this blade. We're going to try and lift up the front of this machine, put some plywood under the tracks so we don't do any damage sliding the tracks over top of the concrete. Since this machine was submerged in water, we cannot start the machine and risk further damage to the engine. I'm going to see how much lift we have. Hold on. Okay. Perfect. That's good. That's good. Now that we've got lifted the machine up, we've got plowed under the tracks. We're going to hook the 60 up to the car body, which is the framework of the tracks. And we're going to try and drag this machine now. Help support this channel by subscribing below and hitting that bell icon. Thanks for all the support so far, especially on this service call series. We love hearing feedback from the community, and if there's anything you'd like to see, be sure to let us know in the comments. So before we got into this, once we got this machine out of the water, we pressure washed it right away, we got it cleaned, we took the panels off, we opened up the doors, we removed the battery, uh, we want to get all that muddy water and if there's any kind of brackish water out of out of the machine everywhere just so it doesn't it creates less damage to the machine until we can start working on it to get the machine running now that we've got the machine dragged inside we took it back off the plywood we've got it on the ground here this is where we want to work on it the first thing we got to do is get the water out of the engine there's two things that we have to do is get the water out of where the engine oil is we also have to get the water out of the cylinders itself that takes a bit more but for now we're going to get the water out of the engine oil. All we're going to do is drain the engine oil, refill it with clean uh, engine oil. The machine was in this position with the upper house turned to the tracks when it got flooded. So because it was in this position, I can't start it and I can't swing it square. So we're going to have to drain the engine oil with it over the tracks like this. We're pretty lucky on this machine because there's an opening in between the, the car body in here. So I just throw a drain pan underneath and I can get to the drain, the drain plug from the engine and it'll go right down into the drain pan without creating any mess. So I've cracked the engine oil drain plug here already and there will be water in here. As you can see, that's straight water draining out. It's clear, it's not black like engine oil. See now, still water. See, that's all water coming out still. Starting to get a little bit of oil with the water. 
It's a mix of water and oil now. So we want to drain all of that out to get that water out of that bottom of that engine. It's glugging like this because it's allowing air back in. If you pull the dipstick tube out a little bit, it'll allow the crankcase to vent and it'll allow for it to come out in a more steady flow. As you can see, I pulled the dipstick and now it's just streaming out. We want to let that dribble and get all of it out. Now that we've got the engine oil and water drained out, I'm going to flush it with a little bit of clean engine oil. The drain plug is still out. Let that flush out a bit. Then we'll wipe the drain plug off, put it in and fill up the engine oil with clean, new, fresh engine oil. I have a clean pour jug here. It makes it easier to get into these smaller machines. Now I'm using Tecmo branded 1540 CK4 engine oil here. Uh, most 1540s will work depending on what kind of climate you're in. You might want to change the engine oil, but that depends on your climate. On these small machines, this 35, a lot of times these air filter housing is a little bit in the way. So I tend to pop them out. We're going to change these as well as they were submerged in water, but that'll do, we'll do in a little bit. Now that they're out of the way, it gives me a little bit better access to the, the fill port right here. Now the drain plug is out, all we're trying to do is get some fresh oil to push any residue in the bottom of the oil pan out a bit more. You don't need much, about a liter or so or even half a liter will work. Now short of actually pulling the engine and pulling the oil pan off, there's no way to get 100% of the water out. There's going to be a hair of water in the bottom still. What we're trying to do is get everything we can possibly get out, out. Then once we fire the machine up, we let it run just for a little bit to cycle it through. Yes, that tiny little bit of residue water will cycle through, it won't do any damage. And then we dump the engine oil again and we put fresh engine oil and that's how we'll get it all out eventually. Now we've got the engine oil flushing through. I put the drain cap back on or the fill cap back on just so no particles or anything fall into the engine. There's very low hours on this machine. And as you can see, there's a watery residue oil mix on the drain plug so we want to make sure we clean that off no point in putting that back in and now i'll put the drain plug back in and tighten it up now that the drain plug is back in and tight we can fill up the engine with fresh engine oil now that we've changed the engine oil we know we've got all the water that we can get out out i'm going to change the engine oil filter so we got fresh oil fresh oil filter so the engine oil filters on the side of the engine here. Um, I use a pair of filter pliers. You can just grab it and twist it off. Now this machine wasn't even turned over with any water in it. So I know there's no water in the oil filter, but because we changed the engine oil, I'm gonna put a new filter on it and we'll change the filter again after we run it for 30 seconds or so when we get this machine fired up. There's a new filter right from John Deere. They come pre-lubricated. If it's not pre-lubricated, you want to put a little bit of an oil film on the seal. You only want to make this filter hand tight. You don't want to use a tool or a pair of pliers because then when you go to remove it, it's going to be really difficult to remove. Now that the engine oil is done, the engine oil filter is done, we know this air filter was underwater. So we're going to have a look at it. It feels very heavy, you can see it's wet. It looks a little bit rusty in here, so we know that this was underwater, we're gonna change it. You also have an air filter inside of that one. It's more of a screen, but if you look at it, you can see it's rusty, it definitely got water on it. We don't wanna rerun this. Normally, you don't have to change these very often because it's a metal screen, you can blow it out and clean it. But in this case, it got wet, it got rusty, and I don't want any of that rusty material getting into the engine. You can see here, Always double check. It's definitely, you can see it's the same. It doesn't screw in or anything. It just, you find this little home, give it a little wiggle and a push and that's where it sits. Same with the outer air filter. We can look at it. We can see that it's the same. Everything's the same dimension, same diameter. Give it a little bit of a twist and a wiggle.
Now the oil filter has changed, it is new, it's on there. It kept falling out a little bit. It wasn't quite as tight as this one on the seal, but it does, you can feel it engage. You can feel it be tight enough. It's just a little bit heavier and it's because it's on an upward angle, it was just popping off on me. Next step here is hydraulic tank. The water was well above the hydraulic tank, so chances are that some got in is probably pretty good. Not a lot, but regardless, this machine is low hours. We want to make sure the hydraulic oil is clean. So we're going to drain the hydraulic oil, we're going to have a look in the bottom, and then we're going to fill it up with clean oil. So this is your hydraulic tank. Your hydraulic tank sight glass is here. The reason I don't think any water got in is because the oil is still lower than the sight glass. But to be safe, we're going to change it. Tank, we've already removed this panel here. Uh, the drain is just underneath here. It's a little square uh, plug that takes Teflon tape to reseal it back up. So we're going to get a couple pails. We're going to get them underneath here. We're going to pull the plug and we're just going to let it drain out. Now, same as the engine oil. If we don't open the cap, it's just going to sit there glugging, if you want to call it. If we vent the cap, then it'll, it'll stream out a lot faster. You have two lids on top of your hydraulic tank. You have one lid that's just a blank lid with four bolts. That's where your hydraulic filter is under. You do not want to open this with a machine running. In fact, you don't want to open it until you vent this cap. It looks like a radiator cap. This is the fill cap. You vent the tank and then you can pull this cap off. If you do it beforehand, the air pressure that's in the tank will make the oil come out of this lid. To fill the hydraulic oil, you can either do it with a funnel or a pour jug through this cap here, just like so, or you can undo these four bolts and you can pull this bigger cap off and it gives you a bigger hole to be able to pour the oil into. Now that I look here, there is actually some water moisture on the cap here, so chances are some water did get into the tank. Okay, now we're gonna drain the hydraulic oil. There's a little square drain plug in the bottom. I use a crescent wrench for it. If you have the proper square drive, you can also use that. I've already cracked it loose a little bit. I'll finish spinning it out. Once you undo this plug, it'll drain all of the hydraulic oil in the tank. There's no shut off top. So I usually have a couple of buckets ready so I can swap buckets as they fill up. And there was a little bit of water that came out first. Now that we have this used oil here, we want to dispose of this properly. You can take it to any oil recycling facility available to you. Now that we've drained the hydraulic oil, I've still got the drain plug out. Uh, we're going to change the hydraulic filter just in case it got any kind of contamination. And then we're going to flush a little bit of hydraulic oil through it, just like the engine oil, and get any residual in there out. I'll have a look inside the tank with a flashlight, make sure it's clean, and then we're going to fill up the hydraulic oil. Whenever we change hydraulic oil in any machine, we always change the hydraulic oil filter as well. We have a return filter here, and we have a pilot filter on the other side. Well, somebody cross-threaded that. Brand new. I like to make sure the top of the hydraulic oil buckets are clean so that when you tip it over to fill a hydraulic tank or engine oil or anything, no dirt falls in. No dirt, water, or any other foreign contaminants. Now we're gonna dump a little bit into the fill cap here just to flush out any on the bottom that a little bit more can come out. Oh, 
I'll let that dribble drain out. Once that's drained out, we'll put the uh, cap back into the bottom, the plug, and we'll fill it up with hydraulic oil. Now this particular plug is a national taper or national pipe thread. It's uh, tapered. It takes Teflon tape to seal it. So try and clean it off, get the old Teflon tape off of it, and we'll put new Teflon tape on. And when you're putting Teflon tape on, there is a right way and a wrong way. You wanna make sure that you go clockwise onto it. And the reason for that is when you go put it back in the hole, you tighten a plug or a bolt or anything clockwise, and that way it doesn't peel the Teflon tape off. It actually makes it stay on and go tighter. Wait a couple of minutes here and we'll just let the rest of this drain out. Now that it's done draining out, we're gonna put the plug back in here. Now with an NPT plug, the tighter you go, the more it seals with that Teflon tape on there. So we have to make sure it's good and tight. This is just excess Teflon that uh, peels off a little bit when you put the plug in. Now that's in, we're going to fill up the hydraulic tank to the sight glass level here. We won't be able to get an exact uh, level until the machine is running and we can put it in the proper check oil position. But for now, as long as we have oil in the sight glass here, we know we have enough oil in the hydraulic system to be able to fire it up. As I get closer to this pail almost being empty, I'll really keep an eye on that sight glass. When you see it come on the sight glass, even after you stop pouring oil, it'll still come up a little ways. I'm on the sight glass now and it's still rising. It's okay if it goes a little bit up because we know once we fire it up, it's gonna suck down a little bit. It is above the sight glass, that's okay, because we know we need to fire the machine up, it's gonna suck down, some oil's gonna go back into the hydraulic filter canister that we changed the filter in. So we know we've got enough oil in this machine now to be able to start it safely, not have to worry about anything, any pump damage or anything, and we'll double check this level again once we get the machine running. Now that that's full, we wanna put the cap back on so nothing can fall back in the tank. So when I put this cap on, you saw that I started all four bolts by hand. Then when I tightened them up, I tightened one and then I did the one across from that. The reason you do that is because there's an O-ring underneath here. And if I tighten up two on the same side, it may make the cap go on a little bit crooked. Then when you tighten the other two down, the O-ring doesn't seat properly. So you always want to do one, go across from it, and then the other two. So now that the hydraulic tank is done, we're going to drain the fuel from the fuel tank. Now, because of the way the machine is positioned, if we can't fire it up and run it, the drain for the fuel tank is above the track frame, and there's probably gonna be at least five gallons or 20 liters of fuel coming out, so I don't wanna create a big mess. So we're, what we're gonna do is this fuel line comes from the bottom of the fuel tank. We're gonna pop it off here. We're gonna get it out the bottom into a, a pail so that we can drain it without creating a contaminating mess. So to do that, we've got a zap strap here that's gonna prevent us from getting it down far enough. So we'll cut the zap strap, okay? Now, I don't wanna just pull this fitting out because as soon as I pull it out, it's gonna start leaking fuel. So I've got a pair of clamp pliers here. You can also use a pair of vice grips and you're gonna to wanna to go back a little ways to give, it, give you some room. Get, pull it out of the loom a little bit and I'm gonna clamp this fuel line off. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna stop the fuel from pouring out until I want it to pour out. We will have a little bit of leak when we pop it out originally, but for now it's not gonna start pouring out. We've got a little clamp here. I use a pair of pliers. Just give it a squeeze, give it a little bit of a twist. You gotta wiggle it a bit and get it down away from that fitting. I just used the pair of pliers to move the clamp from right here where it was holding it onto the fitting to far enough away that the fitting ends and we're off the fitting so I can pull the fuel line off. 
and then now we're going to pop this off. But before I pop it off totally, I want to make sure I have ready to be able to catch any fuel. So I'll grab an empty bucket, which I have ready right here. So now we're going to pull the fuel line off. Once I pull it off, I'm going to feed it down through the bottom. See no fuel coming out. Now that I know I can catch the fuel in a bucket, I can pop my pliers off. And as you can see, there is a bit of water coming out. It's, it's milky. It doesn't look clear. I'll put some in my hand and we'll get a close up in, of my hand here and you can see the water mixed with the fuel in there. See how it looks bubbly? That's water mixed in the fuel. So we're gonna drain the fuel tank out totally. It's not gonna happen really fast. So just uh, if you get distracted, make sure you check your bucket once in a while and it doesn't overflow. When you're dealing with fuels and oils and stuff, it is a very good idea to wear a pair of gloves. Uh, these chemicals are not good for your skin. They're not good for your hands. Um, I poured some in my hand to show you the water that was in the fuel and stuff. Um, I'm not wearing gloves at this point right now. It is a good idea to wear gloves for your health. So now that the fuel tank is completely done draining, I'm gonna pop the loom back on the fuel line here so it looks proper, get, protects it properly, bring the fuel line back up, reconnect it, put the clamp back on to where it should be. And now we're good to fill the fuel tank up with fuel and we know it's not gonna piss out everywhere. So we've already drained the fuel out of the bottom fuel line, but there is a little drain caulk right here. Normally you'd use it to drain the little bit of water that's in all diesel out and stuff like that. In this case, it's a little bit lower than where the fuel line comes out and I wanna make sure all the water is out. I drained it out through the fuel line just because the way the machine is positioned, it's too hard to catch that much fuel. So now I can just use a little drain pan, get it underneath the little drain and we can pop it open and get the last little bit of water and diesel out of it. Normally, if you ever have to drain your fuel out of the machine, you can swing it over top of in between the track area right here and you can just do it with buckets. But in this case, the track frame was in the way for being able to drain all of it out with a bucket and not create a mess. So this is pretty much straight water that's coming out because it's the very lowest part of the fuel tank. Water sits at the very bottom of diesel. It doesn't mix with diesel very much. Now that we've got it all out, I'm gonna close the drain now. Oh, a little bit more is trickling out. And now that it's all out, we're going to uh, close the drain. It's closed. Now, this drain pan here, you can see how much is in there. And I can see the bottom. It's straight water. So with fuel, on all fuel systems on diesel engines, there is a water separator. And that, what that is for is any water that is in the tank, you know, in small quantities that you have in all diesel machines, it goes through a water separator first before it gets to the engine. So even if there's a few drops in the bottom of this tank, it's not a big deal. I'm not worried about it. The water separator is going to catch it before it gets to the engine and creates any damage. So now that we got the fuel drained out and clean fuel in the machine, the next thing we need to do is get the water out of the cylinders of the engine. To do so, we've got to tip the cab forwards to access the engine. But because this machine shut off the way or was shut off the way it was and we can't fire it up to move the boom out of the way, I'm going to have to disconnect some of the hydraulic lines on the cylinders and get the other lines on them so that we can get it in a bucket. And then we'll manually move the, the boom, pivot it over so it's straight and be able to tilt the cab forwards. So we should be able to move this by hand. I haven't tried yet, so here's the first attempt. This cab cannot come down. I can safely go in here with myself, my body, my head, my arms, know that nothing can fall and I can't hurt or kill myself. And you want to spin this engine over a couple of times. See any water that comes out of the uh, engine or anything like that. To support this channel, can you please like, subscribe, and comment. Need parts for your machine? Be sure to visit PortisHD.com. To easily and quickly book a mechanic, visit TecamoHD.com. Thanks for all the support so far, especially on this service call series. We love hearing feedback from the community. And if there's anything you'd like to see, be sure to let us know in the comments.